Welcome to Room 101. Our guests come here to try and place their greatest fears, their most terrifying anxieties, into the Room 101 vault, in the hope that they'll be locked away forever. Joining me tonight is a comedian, actor and radio presenter, whose show, Legally Brown, has been a breath of fresh air for Aussie comedy. Please welcome the ludicrously talented Nazim Hussain. Yes, good, 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 how are you? Very well, you know, take Brown. a seat. Woo. Are you ready for this horror show? I'm ready to chuck a whole bunch of things in here. Down into the vault? Yeah. Down into the hell forever? So once it's in there, it's away from the world forever, right? It's gone, it's gone from your existence. It doesn't exist anymore for you. You've gotten rid of that, yeah. that anxiety. On behalf that of everybody. Fear. Yeah, yeah. Let's begin. Let's begin. Ooh. Oh. oh, that's, that's going, isn't it? <laughs> you gotta get that TV repaired. Hey, that's not good. Oh, here we go. Ah. Oh. Oh. oh, so sweet. It's not even my birthday. <laughs> now that would be a cake and a half, wouldn't it? Okay. Don't breathe that in, that's carcinogenic. <laughs> yeah, okay. Settling down. Okay, what does this represent for you? <laughs> Um, no, this represents mechanics. Mechanics? Who, mechanics, who uh, make me feel like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about <laughs> and that I'm not a man. Oh. Yeah, oh. all the men know what I'm talking about except for the mechanic men. <laughs> okay, uh, is there a specific machismo crushing moment that you have? Well, the, the tipping point for me was a few weeks ago, driving my car, uh, stopped driving and something like this happened, right? <laughs> and it was just smoke and... Fireworks, it was just like it was a, I didn't know what to, so I called Roadside Assist. They came and then the guy lifted up my hood and he goes, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then he said, oh mate, look, you know, I, uh, I could fix it for you, but you know, it's gonna set you back a couple of thousand. Um, oh, you could do it yourself, you know, I mean, it's probably the cheaper option, you just, you can carburetor, you can right? And then he goes, yeah, so What yeah. was it, sorry? Bloody carburetor, mate. Car, car, or something. You can't. Yeah, yeah, car, bloody carburetor. carburetor. That'd be your carburetor, bloody mate. Your insulator, your bloody chimney, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but he was like, he was talking uh, down wait, to me. Hold. How old is your car to have a chimney? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some old vehicle you're driving around in there. <laughs> he was just basically talking, talking down to me. Like, I'm supposed to know what he's talking about. He's the mechanic, I'm the civilian. Fix my freaking carburetor! The military man, this mechanic as well? <laughs> military mechanic. He was wearing a uniform. He had like he blue overalls. He had right. grease on his face, which to be honest, surprises me still. Why Because he mechanic... was doing night moves. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea like, why mechanics still have grease on their face. Like they work with grease every day. Surely you'd know like not to put grease on your... I don't think it's a conscious thing that they're doing. I don't think... You know, just, they they get not... the compact out and go, hi. <laughs> I don't think they're doing that. So when the uber alpha male or the silver back in coveralls mm. comes over, mm. you just play along. You pretend you know stuff? You have to pretend you know what he's talking about. <laughs> because otherwise, like, you're going to get ripped off. You know, if you just go, oh, what, what is a tyre? Well, then you'll say, you know, oh, it's, it costs 5000 Like, you have to, so you play along with it. And are, also, you, are you good at faking it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really good at faking it. Do you do I, different poses so they, and movements? They, they always talk like, they always do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I always do this, because it happens. Put my, like, put my foot on the... Oh, yeah, you need to get that... You the, need to get the groin. Doesn't really work with these pants. <laughs> they got a low-slung crotch on them, don't they? It's pretty Those uncomfortable. bad boys. <laughs> You've got to act like a tough guy. A friend of mine said you can walk into any pub in Australia as long as, you, when you appear at the door, you just scratch yourself around the balls. <laughs> OK, you're at the mechanics with a female friend. Does the mechanic talk to you or your female companion? Have you ever been in that situation? I've been to a mechanic with my mum. And uh, my mum will always lie. Like the mechanic will say, oh yeah, nah, you're looking at around and she'll, you know, $500. And she said, no, I went down the road for $200. <laughs> and like, she shops around. So let's, let's just clarify. This is mechanics yep. who make you feel less manly yep. in the way they talk to you and the way they treat you mm. when you have an issue with your car. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes! <laughs> and everyone's happy. Are we good? We're happy. Everyone's happy. Naz is happy. We're happy. Ooh. 
feel the expectation? You feel that look simmering? I feel it. Yeah, they're about to go on a journey with us. <laughs> Into your fears. Oh. Okay, man. <laughs> it's a really big nipple stud. <laughs> Nipple stud for a hippo or an elephant. Is that, <laughs> am I getting the right vibe here? Oh, uh, close. Um, yeah. Actually, mirrors in the gym. Mirrors in the gym? Yeah, that's a good, good representation right there. Okay. I'm fine with mirrors in other places, you know. I don't mind my face. Yeah. Uh, I just mind my body. And I mind going to the gym and seeing other tough guys doing all their poses at the gym. I don't actually know how to do the weights, but I'm trying to do it and I can see myself stuffing up and these guys are all acting all manly man and then I have to see them, and I feel like even more of a skinny Sri Lankan guy. Oh. Right? So it's not the mirror's fault, though, is it? <laughs> I mean, honestly... Like, the point of a mirror at a gym is basically there to remind you why you have a gym membership in the first place. Just, yeah. just uh, let me work out. I don't need to be convinced that I'm skinny, that I have no muscles. I just want to work out. You've, I've got no calf muscles. <laughs> Actually, check, check this. I have literally... It's a Sri Lankan thing. <laughs> Well, you know the calf muscle is the, is the most difficult part of the male body to get muscle on. Did you know that? Uh, well, yes. I yeah. didn't know that. No, but for all men, it doesn't matter where you're from. Really? Any, anywhere in the world, yeah. Can we have a look, please, at some, uh, at some calf muscle? Oh, okay. It's clearly very difficult to put on weight. Yeah, yeah. That's well, these, these are members of the, the female squad of the Chinese swimming team. <laughs> Now, do you think that's a better look for you? Would you prefer that look? Yeah, to be honest, I would. I don't think all Sri Lankan men put together could, could have one calf muscle as big as any other. It's like we missed out in the calf muscle department. I reckon when God created us, he thought, well, we don't need lower leg strength to pick tea and to cheat at cricket. Like, we... But it's embarrassing. Are you comfortable in the gym? Oh, to be, I go to the gym with a friend, then we just take photos of other people posing in front of the mirror. <laughs> and uh, it's awesome. One time, this, this happened to me, we did a couple of reps, we started catching up about life, and then we, we saw this guy who was posing. He was, so he was, we were take, I was going to take a photo of this guy. He was, he, was, yes. he was posing in front of the mirror, checking out his own ass, ass muscle. I don't know if it's the technical term is ass muscle, though. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that as a, a technical term. It's a muscle around the ass. Well, it's a muscle that makes an ass. <laughs> OK, yeah, OK. So I took, took my camera out. I thought I was pretty subtle. And uh, just as I was about to take a photo, he turned to face me, and my camera was just pointed at... His ass. Yeah. So he was furious. He was looking at me like I was his next protein shake. Like he just yeah. wanted to. <laughs> I nearly died. Do you think he could have seen a reflection of you in the mirror taking the snap? And that's what. <laughs> <laughs> Do mirrors in gyms go into the vault forever? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm sending him to hey! hell. Hey! Thank God. <laughs> Happy? Thank you, Paul. Uh, we're going to be back with more now very shortly. <laughs> Still here with Naz. Hey, Naz. What does this represent for you? Oh. The 101 times. <laughs> <laughs> this represents ASIO agents. ASIO agents. Yeah. That one. Are there any ASIO agents? Well, if you were an ASIO agent, you probably wouldn't say, I'm an ASIO agent. <laughs> that would be a bad way to blow your cover. <laughs> That's not my... I actually freaked out for a second, thinking yeah. you've actually gotten my no, ASIO file. we got it. We, they're, they're great. <laughs> you can just ring them up. <laughs> you can ring them up now, and they just, they just send it over. It's <laughs> great. So, Asia took a photo of me, taking a photo of me. Yeah, yeah, they were there, man. <laughs> a little Asia agent in the toilet. <laughs> That's a shit job. <laughs> okay, Asia agents. Yeah. What have you done, man? You've led them right to us. <laughs> They're going to know now. No, I, I woke up with the surname Hussein, so uh, mm. that's basically what happened. And if you're a Muslim, uh, Asia has either followed you or monitored your calls, or you've had a friend prank call pretending to be ASIO, right? <laughs> it's one of the two. And those prank calls are so awesome because Muslims will undoubtedly freak out because there's like 95% chance that it is ASIO. Um, <laughs> this happened to me, right? I used to work as a tax consultant a few years back. Got a phone call, private number, I picked it up, and uh, the guy said, hi, is this Nazim? This is David from ASIO. And I said, 
oh, sorry, David, I can't speak right now. I'm just about to blow up a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> But uh, he said, sorry. And I said, oh, uh, is this Amir, my good friend? And he said, no, this is David from Asia. And I said, oh, so I'm really sorry. Uh, sometimes me and my friends often prank call each other pretending to be Asio, <laughs> but I'm sure you already know that. Um, <laughs> and so I said, well, hang on a second. How do I even know that you are actually from Asia and you're not just one of Amir's friends participating in his elaborate prank, right? And he goes, all right, if you don't believe me, hang up the phone, Google Asio's number, find the 1-800 number, call that number, and it'll come straight back through to me. So I did, found the number, called it, and it went straight back through to David from Asia. No joke. So I was like, oh, sorry about all that before. Um, I said, I'm nowhere near a bakery, so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, I go, well, what sort of message would blowing up a bakery send anyway? Psh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he said, I would like to talk to you. I said, what do you want to talk about? And he said, well, we'd like to speak to you about what you might know about the South Asian communities or the Arabic speaking communities or the Muslim communities. So, so I said, when do you, you want to meet? They said, after work. I said, I'm not sure what time I finish. They said, don't worry, we'll call you. And then he hung up the phone. <laughs> so I finished work, left the building, and I got a phone call, picked it up. He goes, hi, Nazim, how was work? I said, great. And he said, if you could just turn right at the river, thanks. I was, on, I was working, I know, I felt like I was in a freaking James Bond movie. <laughs> um, but he said, let's meet at a restaurant. And um, I said, well, are you guys where all the spies meet. <laughs> well, I was surprised. I said, well, are you guys, are you guys gonna pay for dinner? And um, they, said, they said, yeah. So we went to, went to this restaurant. They were just asking me all sorts of questions. But they were trying to trip me up. So they asked me, like, oh, how's your day, blah, blah, blah. And then they tried to trip me up. They said, oh, you know, mate, Israel, Palestine, you know? I mean, the Israelis, <laughs> I mean, and they were expecting me to just say, yeah, let's just kill all the Jews. <laughs> like, as if I was, not what that I had anything, not that I had nothing. <laughs> I may have missed something just then, did I don't, I don't, I, no, we shouldn't kill all the Jews. We shouldn't kill Jews. We shouldn't kill anyone. We shouldn't kill anyone. No, we shouldn't kill anyone. But, kill anyone. but they were trying to trick they you in some way, like, yeah, they, they say, say, sometimes I get home from work, I'm so tired, yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, <laughs> blowing some shit up. <laughs> Has Operation Surf and Turf snagged anyone else? <laughs> you know what, like, because they said that you're not allowed to speak to anybody about this. And I said, I'm not even... <laughs> you guys won't say anything, right? But um, so after the meeting, I, I suddenly had conversations with people we were talking about, and it came out that a lot of us had been interviewed by Asia. I told one of my friends about it. He hadn't been interviewed by Asia. He's this Iraqi friend of mine. He likes taking photographs, takes photos of all sorts of things. One day he was out taking photos of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, buildings, other... Bri <laughs> well, so what? Everyone likes bridges, right? So the next day, the next day, he got a knock at the door. He opened the door and uh, there two guys from Asia and they said, hi, can we come in? And he said, well, no. I spoke to my friend Nazim and he said, you guys pay for lunch. So... <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, two guys so broke. <laughs> That's your file. Really? This is... Uh... ASIO agents. <laughs> yeah! Bang! <laughs> You've got some interesting ones. We had some dull ones, but these are. Ooh. These are good. What does, <laughs> what does that represent for you? This, this represents old people, but not just old people, like old people who rip me off. <laughs> Okay, uh, for those of you who are having trouble understanding what this is, all right, it's meant to be like an ear horn. At, uh, hello, uh, uh, ow! You can, actually, you can actually hear the sound of death in this. <laughs> okay, in what way have innocent old people impacted your youthful experience of life? Oh, now, uh, now I'm the bad guy. I'm just asking, I'm just asking the Listen, questions, that's why I'm here. Okay, I uh, went to buy some sheets uh, the other day. So I went to the shop, it was the only shop selling sheets on the street. Because uh, I was surprising, I thought there'd be sheet shops everywhere. <laughs> but, um, there used to be, man. So this old lady running the shop, I went in there and she was really old and sweet. And uh, I felt she was going to rip me off from the start, but I wasn't sure. I was like, no, she's an old lady, she's going to be nice. So she said, I've got these sheets here, 20 bucks, went to the counter. She said, oh, $20, you're, you're a darling, isn't it? You know, you're my last customer for the day, blah, blah. When I was your, all that sort of old lady talk. 
Uh, when it came to, to buying it, I said, so $20, I pulled out $20, and she said, that'll be $30, thanks. I said, you said $20. Yeah. And she said, well, it's worth $30. <laughs> and then she looked at me, and she knew that I had no other choice, and I was stuck, and so she just stared at me, and I stared back at her, and she won the staring competition. She stared you out. And I just gave her another 10 bucks. How old was she? I don't know, like 150 years old. <laughs> well, you so lost a staring co contest with a 150-year-old woman. <laughs> I'm so she gave you the sheets big time. So she... She gave me the sheets. Bang. OK. Has, has anything else happened with old people? I need a little bit more. Has yes. an old bugger dropped their teeth in your salad, accidentally knitted you a car, or have they disappointed you in bed? I nearly had a... <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. I like All it. I want to tell you about this one time. I actually nearly got into a punch-on with an elderly man at a cafe. I went to this cafe and I, uh, I sat down on this big communal table, old man sitting across from me with his newspaper, and I received a phone call. As soon as I picked up the phone, old man starts yelling at me. Yelling at me across, he said, get off the phone, this is a cafe, some people are trying to read a newspaper. And I said, excuse me, that was pretty rude. He said, rude, you came to a cafe and you're talking on your phone. And I said, I came here to make phone calls. And then, um, <laughs> End of this whole thing, he started clenching his fists, mm. wanted to punch me, he wanted to fight me. I mean, young man with a phone, old man with a paper, it's a cross-generational impasse of belligerent stupidity, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what age are we going soylent green on these buggers? Anything above, say, 33. 33? <laughs> I love it. I'm good. I, that's, that's everyone in this... That's I've got everyone four years, room. I've got four years, I'll come join you. But old people have a lot of wisdom, and it'd be great to be able to tap into that. Don't you think? It's getting hot in here. So take on all your clothes. I'm getting so hot. I'm looking at the road. Oh my god. It's getting hot in here. So take on all your clothes. Hey, go, put that. That doesn't help at all, does it? What's that about? To be honest, that wasn't meant to happen. I feel bad. I feel mean. They would sound better if they turned their hearing aids on, I think, though. <laughs> God almighty. You know what? Oh, I, li I, like, I like old people. I'm now conflicted. I can't do it. I can't put the old people in now. Look, I've changed my mind. Old people can stay. What do you think? Are you happy? Get them out of there. Yeah. Old people not going in the box. Yeah, yes. Shout out to the nursing home. Back soon. Okay. What? Are you sure you want to do this? Listen, this, is, this next one is nothing personal. I just want you to know that. You sure you want to do this? I'm sure I want to do this. You know, Dave Hughes came on this show. Yeah. And he put his family in room 101. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to do what's best for the world. Yeah. <laughs> not personal. Is it not personal? Okay. <sighs> what does this represent for you, Naz. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to put into room 101? <laughs> Control yourself, man. Come on. <laughs> We're pointy end of town now. White people. White people. <laughs> look, look, it's a temporary measure. Just a temporary... No, once they're in there, they're gone. No, but like just for like 20, 30 years, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Like. I I, I can explain, right? You bet. It's well, actually I, nothing personal. Because I want to send them now. I just want to, I want <laughs> to go. You want to do it? Can't stand them. Can't stand oh, white look, people. No, it's not. I, I, I actually... Think, I think I might be one of them. No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, I, I hate I, it. They smell... <laughs> they, 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 oh. What do they smell like? Well, they taste like chicken. <laughs> I hear, <laughs> I've heard. I've heard <laughs> from German cannibals that they taste like <laughs> chicken. I... <laughs> I've got to taste up right now. OK, we are responsible. Mm. Uh, for Hitler, Miley Cyrus, Cardinal Pell, and the French. Mm. <laughs> Look, I actually love white people. Can I just say, I, I, I have a lot of friends who are white, and uh, like white people have won everything. They've conquered all of the world, pretty much. Um, they've settled in in different places. Whether or not people were there already, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they they're, they're great at finding oil and resources. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Just give the rest of us a chance to win at the world just for a couple of decades. You know, white people do get a bad rap. It's, it's, it's not easy being white. <laughs> and I don't think everyone can do what we've done. Not everyone is comfortable storming into someone else's country, pilfering all their natural resources <laughs> under the pretense of liberating them. White people are really good at that but you, shit. You guys have had practice. That's the thing, like, if you just went in a room for a couple of decades, right, it would give brown people, Asians, black people, the opportunity to practice, to get good at our craft, at recolonising the world. Um, you know, we just, we just give us a chance, give Sri Lankans at least a chance to be the superpower. Imagine when you come back, right, and there's, there's flavour, um, <laughs> it's like good music again. Can I be one of your token white friends? Can I just uh, be like a token white friend? Have you got enough white friends at the you moment? You know what? I don't have enough token white friends. I'd be a token white friend, man. Yeah. Would you be able to tell me apart from your other token white friends? <laughs> <laughs> Would that be an issue for... <laughs> be an issue? <laughs> Look, I don't see myself as white. Okay, just, I'm, just, I'm just more like... a, a buff or a parchment or a seashell. <laughs> <laughs> what shade of white? Are we um, I, think I mean, we white people have done a lot of mingling, haven't we? <laughs> and not all of it lovingly, if you know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so what? What? Shade? I think anything above Italian. Above, <laughs> above Italian. <laughs> Does this help you at all? <laughs> well, I would say, like, like, like above there. <laughs> <laughs> That would be the way we'd decide, you know, we'll, okay. just, we'll just walk up so to we just and... go and do the colour match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good, it's like um, if you guys were in a room together, right? Like, it's actually... What, all the white people? Yeah, like, you guys could have a meeting and regroup, think about all the achievements. You, you know, you've, there's so many things to be proud of, but you guys never get a chance to just sit in a room and just chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're good at stealing other people's ideas and making them our own. Exactly, that's yep. a skill. Yep, we're, uh, we've given the world fireworks. And reggae, I'm pretty sure reggae is one of ours as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Is it? But Delta Goodrum. Two really white people got together to make Delta Goodrum. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Delta. White girls don't find brown guys like me naturally sexy or attractive. I, I can't speak for all white girls, but <laughs> I've been getting lost in your in your dark pools of eyes over the whole. <laughs> It's been, it's been hard not to fall into oh, the wonderful... You're making me no, not want you... to put you in the box as Are well. Are you blushing? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, there is no other TV station on the planet that would discuss whether or not we should throw white people out of the world. <laughs> also... <laughs> oh, my God! Also, I didn't want you to be put on trial by the Daily Telegraph by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> At least... At least I'm going to be up there with you on the stand going, I don't know, he just tricked me with his, <laughs> with his weird eyes just there. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> well, I was joking the whole time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you please thank Nazim Hussain. <laughs> <laughs>